there. This is the pen. This is the everyday carry artist fountain pens for July. Um, I am not as frequently home during the summer because I'm an avid sailor and I have a boat and I spend a lot of time on the boat. So probably for the next couple of months, I'm going to be maybe one to two videos a month instead of my usual one a week at this point. At any rate, I wanted to tell talk to you a little bit about some of the stuff, some of the changes in my pens that I'm carrying. And the first thing I wanted to discuss is a rationale for how I, how I rotate my pens. Visual artists need different nibs for different activities that they're doing with drawing. So I like a, a nice selection of nibs from broad to fine. Uh, I like to have one, at least one flex nib in there. I like my like semi flex nib in there. Um, I like vintage, a mixture of vintage and regular pens. So that said, I'm going to be taking two pens out of my pen rotation because they ran out of ink. The first one is the Eclipse, and the second one is this Universal Pen. They're both vintage pens. Um, and I'm going to be doing a couple other tasks as well. So to replace these two pens, I'm going to be adding a Wingsung 698, which I'll show you in a second, to the collection. And I'm also going to be adding my Ready Point Flex Pen. Um, so I'll talk to you a little bit about those two pens. So right now what I have left in here is I have a Pelican M200, uh, a, that's my Waterman Phileas fine point, and that's my food a nib. So I'm kind of short on pens right now. Oh, wait, yeah, and I forgot. This is my Noodler's Conrad. We're gonna do some. This one is that ready point. It needs a little surgery before it can go into rotation though. So I had a little problem with this pen. It kept burping excessively. Like anybody who's used these kinds of, of pens will probably know what I'm talking about. Um, when I, these are sack fill pens. This is just a different mechanism of filling mechanism than the normal sack fill pens because this body comes off. Whereas like a normal sack fill pen would have, um, like this wherever here from the 50s. It has this lever on the side and you fill it with the lever so you don't have to take it out of the body of the pen. All right, so, but this one, it doesn't have that. However, I wanna trim the sack because, um, you know, I'll be halfway through something and there'll be this like air exchange between this thing and that thing and it'll make this nib kind of burp a drop of ink. So I actually asked somebody who works in the um, fountain pen repair business about this, and he suggested making the sack smaller so that there's less air exchange here. And he said also keeping the sack full helps. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to trim this sack down and I'm going to replace it for you so you can see how that's done. And I think I'll make that sack, I don't know, I mean it's a flex pen so it uses a lot of ink but I really want to make it smaller. So I think I'm going to cut it down to right about here and we'll see how that does. Now these can be cut with just a razor blade, just like anything, you know, you just go straight across and push down until you get. So now it's like, uh, I don't know, you ladies in the audience, you use nail polish. So this is very similar uh, it, that's basically, it is nail polish. I mean, that's, it's kind of like got similar ingredients like acetone and stuff like that, I think, or not acetone, but whatever it is that nail polish has in it, it smells like nail polish. All right. So to get that sack on, we just fit it over the top and then push it down like so. And then you'll notice you get like a little buildup at the bottom of shellac. That's good, I feel, because it seals the pen. Um, I think that you can also take... Uh, 
a little bit of that, a little more shellac, and run it right across here. You want to make extra sure that that's nice and sealed right around the edge there so you don't get any leakage of ink out the sack. Now, they say you should give this about, I don't know, at least a couple hours until you fill it. So I'm not going to give you a writing sample with the ready point today. I'm just going to leave it out like this and and then I'll put I'll be putting this into uh I'll put this together and I'll put it back in my rotation. Um, here's that part. Okay, so that's all the parts of the ready point. Now, on to the next thing that I wanted to tackle. This is my new pen right here. It's just off camera. You can't quite see it. I'm going to move it over. There we go. So that's a wing sung. And it's been, as per the manufacturer's instructions, the nib and feet have been soaking in a little bit of dish soap to get out the um, manufacturing oils, that might, any manufacturing oils that might be on the nib or the feet. So we want to make sure they come out of there. Whoa, I have giant paws and I can't get down in there to get anything. Okay, baby food jars are awesome for every fountain pen related task, I feel. Fortunately, I had some babies not all that long ago and I still have some of the jars that I kept for craft purposes. All right, so I'm gonna dry off that feed. This Wing Sung, it's a really cool pen. It's got a transparent feed. I mean, it's a cool looking pen. I don't know how it's gonna perform yet, but I like the way it looks, that's for sure. So this thing is like a washer that fits in here. And if I had one gripe about this, I'd be worried about losing it. Because, you know, I know myself and I might lose that. This is the box that came in here. And I'll do a proper review once I actually have used the pen. I don't like to review pens until I've spent a while using them. Because I feel like you miss out on a lot of the little idiosyncrasies of the pen. So... It came with some silicon grease, and uh, rather than use my own silicon grease from over there, I'll probably use this that it came with, and the reason I want to do that is because it might be different thickness. I don't know if that makes a difference, but I guess it's always good to use what you get with the pen, because that's what it's intended for. So, to get the piston out, I discovered this before I cheated a little. I discovered this before I was uh, doing this today. You just pop it out the bottom. It's got a little attachment in there, so when you put it in, it kind of threads itself. But for now, I'm just going to pull it out, and I'll I'll grease this entire thing. And something that I learned about um, these pens, or about silicon grease, which I didn't know, is that silicon grease is, uh, and I'm, I'm going to close close up a little on this so you can see a little better what I'm doing. I'll move this for now. Um. Silicon grease is uh, not something that's interactive with the ink. So something that I used to worry about a lot is that the silicon grease would um, get into the ink and do something to the ink. But I guess that doesn't happen. I've been informed by several people at this point. That... Okay, so this is Yoroshizuku Soyoro. Sorry to like just jump that in there on you, but I forgot to bring ink over here when I was going to fill this. Um, and I'm going to put my piston all the way down to the bottom. I'm probably not going to do a complete fill because I just want to see how the ink works with the pen. So I'll just do like a partial fill. These hold a lot of ink, these pens. I don't know exactly how much, but I do know a lot. This is a wing song. Fourteen K. C 
soft. Fine. And when you're not pressing down on it and you're not attempting to get any flex out of it, let's see how it writes. So that's, that's without, and this would be me applying pressure. So let's see a line. This is very similar to the Pelican in terms of line variation, which you're getting like a significant amount there. I would definitely describe it as a, like a soft, fine, semi-flex nib for sure. It's a nice nib. Now, what I don't like is it's got a little bit of roughness on the page. Like I like me a smooth nib and the Pelicans are really smooth, but this is I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear the feedback. You know what I mean? When I write, and it's just, it's kind of scratchy. Which is okay. Because what you do is you just go to one of those, you get the um, real fine grit stuff, and you do some figure eights on the fine grit, and it'll smooth the tip of that nib. So I don't think there's any, any problem with the tines being misaligned. Everything looks really perfect in there. You know, the tines look aligned really, really well. But I do think that it just probably needs a little bit of work on the tip to get it to get it to where I want it. And and you know, just just a little bit of time with a couple figure eights should take care of that whole thing. Um well anyway, that's my wing song. I'm really happy with it. I I really uh didn't know what to expect with a 14 karat gold nib. I like the degree of flex. I think it's quite similar to my uh Pelican M200. And uh I would recommend that anyone, you know, if you if you were going to give a pen a try and it's a Chinese pen, I think I think this is is not a bad not a bad bet for you. A lot of good things are said about the Jin Hao's as well. Um, I'm not like, I think that where Chinese pens can often fall down where other brands don't is in the consistency of the manufacturing. But that said, you have pens like Noodler's, um, pens, which are, uh, people think they're made in America, but they're not, they're made in India. And they're also made with the same similar, like inconsistent manufacturing. And I think the wing songs are probably, and I believe they're made by the greater brand hero are probably seem like they have a more consistent manufacturing or they're getting there. Anyway, I'm sure there's still some bugs they have to iron out. And I think brands like Pelican, you know, there's a lot to be said for taking the same pen and, and maintaining the same style for years and years, because what you have there is not only a classic, but something where you can hone all the little things that go wrong in the machining process to the point where you get that thing, you get it down to perfection. And Whenever I see a new pen brand, I'm like, they're not at perfection yet, but they might be someday, and I'm excited to see that happen. So it's pretty cool to look at that from the side. I think it looks translucent there. That's kind of fun. And then when you look at it straight on, it's it's dark blue. So some neat things happening with this pen, and I plan on reviewing it once I get it like tuned up and I've written with it for a while. So I wanted to tell everyone to have a nice day. Enjoy the rest of your July. Have a good summer. Get out. Have fun. And we'll see you in August. Bye.